Hello dear viewer and welcome to part 1 of the complete guide to Vokree, which is a mod for Skyrim, a minimalistic perk overhaul. The goal of this three part series is to go through all the perk trees and talk you through most if not all new and changed perks. If you are new to the channel I make Skyrim builds and quite a few of them use this mod, so you may check the builds later uh, for more details. My main focus when I make Skyrim builds is synergy, so combining various perks and abilities for some extra power. So it is quite likely I will focus mainly on perks that combine well with other perks and abilities and items and the like. The goal of the series is not to compare Vokri to Ordinator, yes I know most things that are attainable with Vokri can also be done with Ordinator. Vokri is, however, much more like the vanilla system, so it allows for more inter-skill synergy, and that's all I will say for this comparison. Being the vanilla plus style mod, Vokri still expands your character building options, filling in the holes in the vanilla perk trees, allowing, for example, an unarmed build that is not a Khajiit with high enchanting, or adding a special berserker branch of perks uh, to two-handed skill. Some skills are affected more than others, so we will talk about some of them for much longer. This episode is about the warrior skills only, each main playstyle will have its own episode. Hi, editing belly here, there is one thing I forgot to mention, which is a piece of information you would like to know if you are new to the mod. Uh, all the ranked passive bonus perks at the bottom of every, almost every skill tree, uh, such as Armsman or uh, Alchemist, they usually have five ranks and they increase the overall effectiveness of the skill, are replaced with uh, one perk, one uh, non-ranked perk at the bottom of a tree and it's just mastery and of, of any respective skill except I believe smithing and that is an important change for the sake of well synergy and sort of broader uh, hybrid builds uh, so yeah one thing of note that will not be mentioned later but it is something to consider uh, if you are about to plan your character ahead of time okay then let's move on so let's get things started with the skill that is improved quite a lot by Vokri, Archery. It is covered under the Thief Stone, I know, but judging by its placement in the constellations and the official wiki, it is a warrior skill. It retains most of the good old vanilla perks like Quick Shot Ranger and Steady Aim. It does get rid of the useless critical shot perk though, instead offering a variety of situational and player skill dependent ways of getting critical damage. It also replaces the bullseye with pinning shot. Bullseye grants a chance to paralyze targets while pinning shot slows the targets down by 15% for 15 seconds. It looks like it is weaker than the bullseye, but the great news is its effect stacks with itself and with the poisons of slow, meaning you will be able to slow your enemies to a crawl. Vokri also offers some new ways of increasing your movement speed via light armor perks, old and new, so the combat archers can build up a movement speed advantage allowing them to become a viable option even without all crafting skills perked. <laughs> what do you think about that? You can also choose to specialize in long distance archery or close distance archery. For stealth archers we have far shot, impaling shot and arrow to the knee. Albeit very funny, the arrow to the knee perk is so situational and rarely useful it is almost not worth taking. It makes enemies who sprint fall to the ground. Enemies would sprint towards you mainly if you have a long distance to cover, which means you probably prefer shooting them from far away. Which means in turn you are a stealth archer, which means you will most likely get rid of them in one or two shots regardless. Pity, but it makes this very creative perk more or less a decoration. Impaling shot in the long range leftmost branch can be used for nice hit and run Parthian tactics, especially with the pinning shot much higher on the tree, and some lingering damage health poisons. 
Impaling shot will deal a bit of bleeding damage to running targets for 15 seconds, spinning shot will slow them down for 15 seconds and its movement speed penalty stacks with itself as mentioned. Lingering damage poison will, of course, stack with the bleeding caused with the pinning shot. It means you can easily keep your distance while slowly draining enemies health pool. The short distance perks are even more useful. We can get up to 40% damage at close range, we get the ability to knock a shield from the enemy's hand with a breaching shot, but most importantly the gore perk which deals extra damage and pushes the target back if you hit them while they were power attacking. Timing this counter shot gets much easier with two ranks or even one rank actually of steady aim, which slows down time while you aim with your bow. With just a bit of practice you will be able to avoid most power attacks. If you also get the Hunter's Focus perk, which makes you immune to stagger while drawing a bow or holding a shot, you can still get the gore effect even when the power attack lands. Gore has a tiny delay like this. And for Arcane Archers we have the Lion's Arrow perk, which casts a weaker version of your chosen projectile spell when you release an arrow from a fully drawn bow. Unfortunately it requires dual casting perk in the respective magic school, most likely destruction, and it has two ranks, so your arcane archers will not be able to really shine from the day one. You can, however, combine lion's arrow with elemental arrows from a mod or the creation club uh, to a devastating effect. Overall, combat archers seem to be gaining the most from the Vokri new archery perks. A character with ranger, quickshot, gore, pinning shot, some mobility perks from light armor and maybe poison perks from alchemy so that you can craft long-lasting slow poisons and spread them around on multiple enemies. Such a character would be stronger and more interesting to play than most vanilla combat archers. And because it doesn't really require many more perk points than in vanilla, you can still add some other skills. To to customize such a build to your liking, smithing, alteration, conjuration, whatever you feel is best. Now for the one-handed skill, overall we have quite a few alterations here, we have an extra dual wielding perk, we have extra weapon specific perks and the vanilla ones have been rebalanced, improved and sometimes renamed. There is even a whole new branch for daggers, power attack perks also got a major revamp, no more nearly useless backwards power attack paralysis, and there is a perk, a very early game one, giving your power attacks extra damage derived from your current stamina. This encourages a glass cannon build with a low health pool, but very high stamina, and it combines very well with the 100 perk, the Victory Rush, which restores 100 points of stamina after you kill something with a one-handed weapon. Well, actually 100 or 150, depending on which uh, iteration of Vokri you are using, if you are up to date, I believe it is 100. But let's start from the left with the dual wielding perks. We still have the familiar dual flurry and dual savagery, but the latter is improved and now also increases the chance of stagger when power attacking with two weapons. The new one on this branch is the Blade Dancer, granting you a 30% attack damage resistance when dual power attacking. Considering you can deal extra damage with high stamina now, having one of your weapons enchanted with absorb stamina and one of your worn items with stamina regeneration can drastically improve your combat efficiency. There is also a glorious perk in light armor called Evasive Sprint, which negates 50% of incoming damage when you sprint in light armor. And there is still Agility perk there, improving your stamina region in light armor. Such a combo of perks and items can create a devastating result and really entice you to rely on mobility and endless power attacks. So dual wielding berserkers and all sorts of agile fighters and scouts are now more viable and interesting than in vanilla game. The sword specific perks will now gear you towards more defensive combat, with the two ranks of overpowering assault reducing the damage dealt by an enemy hit with a sword by up to 15%. This stacks nicely with the mocking blow perk in block, which will reduce the attack damage of enemies you power bash against. So a single weapon build or a sword and shield build, especially one wearing heavy armor, can now improve its effective defense beyond the maximum armor rating. Quite well beyond actually. Consider also the nice combo between the Blade Dancer and Overpowering Assault, which can result in a total of, uh, I believe, 40 something 
incoming damage reduction just for having perks a character like this should take anyway. Next we have the maze perks with the denting blows still reducing targets armor but the new perk disrupting strike can interrupt spell casting with a power attack silencing enemies and immobilizing them for 5 seconds. This perk makes Maces a go-to weapon for anyone who wishes to hunt down spellcasters, but also Draugr because it also works the same for enemies in the middle of shouting. Consider an Absorb Magicka or Damage Magicka enchantment on your mace. It can render mages completely useless, especially if you also have some shock spells enhanced with perks and potions. Also, a character wielding a sword and a mace can now greatly improve their defense while removing defense from the enemies and incapacitating spellcasters. Never tried it myself, but it must be a rather satisfying combo. Axes, on the other hand, are now geared towards hurting other warriors, with the Grievous Wounds perk dealing extra damage against targets you've already hit, and Shield Biter dealing 6 times critical damage and forcing the target to drop a shield if they were blocking. Considering there is now a perk allowing us to disarm an opponent with a sideways power attack, an axe wielding Dragonborn can render an enemy warrior useless in 2 hits if he is a bit lucky. We also get a new perk branch for daggers consisting of 2 ranks of fangs and 1 of spitting Cobra. Fangs will make your dagger deal more damage against enemies that are poisoned or bleeding. To make them bleed you need the Spitting Cobra, which requires 70 in the skill, so unfortunately to make any use of Fang's early game you need poisons. Daggers, however, can be quite useful because of the new power attack perks, Crater Maker and Disarming Slash. Crater Maker gives your forward power attacks a chance to knock enemies to the ground and Disarming Slash gives sideways power attacks a chance to disarm. Considering daggers are the fastest and power attacking with them costs the least stamina, a dagger wielding warrior can effortlessly keep his enemies armless and helpless. A dagger and sword fighter can combine this tactical approach with an increased defense. Now for the two-handed skill which got a similar treatment, the weapon specific perks have similar functionalities to their one-handed counterparts, except they are stronger. Two-handed sword reduces enemy damage more and warhammers silence and immobilize for longer, as well as remove more armor. However, the hook blade perk for battle axes deserves some special attention. It crashes through all blocks, not just shields, and every time you power attack through enemy block you knock them down and deal extra damage. This combines well with a new branch of berserker perks, namely death or glory, allowing you to deal up to 100 percent more damage when you are below half health. Berserker giving you a 30% chance to resist stagger from attacks when you are power attacking with a two-handed weapon and bear hide reducing the incoming damage by 30% when you are power attacking with a two-hander. These perks, especially death or glory, can create an interesting escalation in combat with the vicious charge perk and the crowd pleaser perk. Vicious Charge makes your forward sprinting power attacks deal up to 50% more damage against high health targets. Then, as the combat progresses, you will get a stacking bonus to your two-handed skill for each kill and get rewarded for taking damage yourself. It basically builds up a massive damage buff in the longer fights. With a huge sword you can easily increase your defense in all this madness and especially with a battle axe you can easily improve the offensive value of your power attacks. And with War Master, your forward power attacks will have 25% to paralyze the target. That includes charge forward power attacks, meaning you have a potential of delivering an opening power attack that deals 50% more damage from charge, deals twice the critical damage and paralyzes. If you wear light armor, the evasive sprint perk will still remove 50% of incoming damage when you charge like that, and your bear hide will still remove extra 30% damage during the power attack at the end of said charge. It all means sprinting from enemy to enemy to deliver massive damage and to stay mobile becomes a viable strategy, especially for high stamina builds. Now for heavy armor, which has quite a few additions, it also combines remarkably well with the block skill, so let's talk about both skills together. There is a very early game perk of Battle Fatigue, which removes 20% of attack damage from enemies that are low on stamina. Remember that awesome defense of sword perks and mocking blow? 
well, with battle fatigue and some means to take away enemy stamina, like absorb stamina effect on your sword or drain vitality shout or siphon stamina enchantment from the summer mist mod, you can remove even more incoming damage. This combines stupidly well with unwavering defense in block, also an early game perk, which damages the stamina of the attackers whose attack you just blocked. Then moving up the branch in heavy armor, we have immovable object which has a 10% chance of staggering enemies who attack you. This combines well with the poke the dragon perk in block, which gives you a 15% chance to stagger enemies whose attack you just blocked and gives you an extra damage on your next attack against them. Next in heavy armor we have Reap the Whirlwind, which also gives you extra damage against enemies who just attacked you. And then the face of the mountain perk, uh, which always staggers enemies who power attack against you and has a chance of knocking them down. So if you plan to use heavy armor and block, combining the left branch of one with the left branch of another will severely punish your enemies by making them quite useless in combat and granting you extra damage against them. The rightmost branch of heavy armor has a new perk Elemental Defense, granting you 15% resistance to all three elements, which will stack with Elemental Protection in block for a total of 65% resistance with your shield raised. If you also wear Otar, the Dragon Priest mask with all three resistances, you can reach the maximum available resistance to all elements with two perks and one item. The final perk on the right branch of heavy armor is a little bit useless, I think. It's called Glancing Blows and it protects you completely against the effects of weapon-specific perks of your enemies. Yeah, some of these perks can be quite scary, but at the point of the playthrough when you can unlock glancing blows, you most likely already have plenty of ways to ignore, punish and offset enemy weapon attacks and power attacks. Take this perk only if you wish to specialize in heavy armor completely. Each armor skill also has a perk allowing you to use other perks requiring a full set, such as armor training with no helmet on. This is nice for aesthetics, but if you are using, say, summer mist enchantments, it can also have an impact on your build, as some powerful enchantments from that mod can be placed on circlets, but not on helmets. Amplify Destruction is one example. Most block perks have already been mentioned. We still have the remarkable power and deadly bash perks. We have our block runner and quick reflexes, but there are two wonderful additions on the rightmost branch. Dragon Tail, which has a 30% chance to knock enemies to the ground if you interrupt their power attack, which of course is much easier to time with quick reflexes. And with the 100 perk of Stoneheart you will never be staggered when you keep your block. Considering the great many ways you will have to knock down and stagger your enemies, this perk is a final FU to all hostile warriors, also quite useful against the dragons, which tend to stagger you quite often, especially if they land too close. There is also a hidden gem of a perk, the Torch Bash. It makes the torches deal 10 times the normal damage when you bash with them, and it also sends enemies away fleeing in fear. This is a perk that should have been in the game from day one, and I really have no idea what Todd was thinking. Lastly, we have the smithing skill, which isn't really affected that much. It offers a padding branch and high yield mining perk. However, with the Vokri installed, mining for ores will now grant you some smithing skill increase. This change can potentially make the high yield mining somewhat attractive for some characters who would like to be a full self-made man and those who wish to make the grind to 100 in the skill a little bit easier and more diverse and more immersive. Unfortunately, the perk requires 80 in the skill. Seems like it should be more like 50, perhaps? We also have three perks for armor padding and layered plates, which are special hidden pieces of armor or clothing. Extra armor piece can be somewhat useful in reaching the armor cap faster and with early game armors, but there are ways of doing the same without set perks, albeit they usually require some enchanting alchemy looping or resto looping, so perhaps one or two more perks in smithing are a more natural solution. The padding can also carry additional enchantments, albeit these enchantments will be weaker than normal. First they will have 25% normal strength and with the hidden enchantments perk, the final perk of the branch, 
50%. Also, only some enchantments can go on these paddings and plates. So overall, if you have any clothing, armor or cloaks mod, you are very likely to have some extra item slots for free and with no penalty, and these perks will unfortunately be easily ignored. Hidden enchantments requires three prerequisite perks, so four perk points total. It would be much better, in my humble opinion, if the perk allowed for full enchantment power and make paddings and plates potentially carry all wearable enchantments. Then when combined with extra effect perk in enchanting it would be really well worth taking and uh, all the extra perk points would not feel wasted. The way it is right now, the only really valuable use for these padding perks is with certain summer mist enchantments that never scale with your level or any of your skills. Those are few and far between, so as it is now the need for the padding and plates will be rather rare. And I think this is it for now. Overall, the warrior skills in Vokree offer a lot of inter-skill synergy. They give warriors a bit more diversity in approach to combat. The choice of weapons matters a bit more. The tanks are a bit tankier. The dual-wielding warriors can achieve interesting results by mixing and matching different weapon types. Definitely a nice sweet spot between the narrow specialization required to succeed in Ordinator and the vanilla scatterbrainness. Uh oh no, was that a, an Ordinator comparison? Well, hell. Anyway, that's it for now. Join me the next time for the Thief Skill Vokri Guide. Take a look at my Vokri builds. I have some archers and warriors for the mod. Links in the description. For now, subscribe, like, comment, consider supporting me on Subscribestar, and we will see each other again. Bye bye. Jugglers and singers require applause. You are a gamer!